Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am feeling a little extra American. One reason, today is baseball's opening day. Here in New York... Here in New York... It was, here in New York, it was 40 degrees, but I still ate ice cream out of a baseball helmet. Why? Oh, just a little something worth celebrating today, because literally three minutes before I walked out on this stage here, the New York Times reported a New York grand jury voted to indict former president Donald J. Trump. He was right. We're finally saying Merry Christmas again. <laughs> this is... I, you know what? Wow. I didn't know this was going to wow. be coming. I thought maybe wow. it would never come. I used wow. to think, oh, what does it matter if it came? I didn't know it would feel this good. Come on! Come this on. is good. This is, this is good news for everybody, even yeah. him. He, yeah. he now gets to join his J6 prison choir, you know? <laughs> They're number one on iTunes, baby. And you know what? He should see whether that grand jury will cut him a check for $130,000 because he is so screwed. <laughs> oh. We... We will have more on this story as soon as I am able to talk about it with a camera shooting me from the waist down. <laughs> <laughs> You know... <laughs> 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 you know that feeling when you're laughing and crying at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, you know, in light of all this, you know what did not age that well? The former president's interview with Sean Hannity. Last night, Sean Hannity aired the third and, Lord help us, final installment of his interview with the guy. Every night that he's on this interview, Sean has struggled to help the ex-president say something not horrible. <laughs> Last night, he failed again with this game of dictator word association. All right. I'm going to give names and give me quick, short sentence of narratives, whatever comes to your mind. Putin. Well, I'm going to have to go a little short, but uh, I got along with him great. Chi. Uh, a man I got along, again, I got along with him great. Kim Jong-un. Uh, again, got along with him great. Ooh, ooh, this is fun. I want to play. Uh, Charles Manson. He's not crazy. He's very smart. Uh, uh, Cruella DeVille. I like her. I respect her. Uh, O.J. Simpson. He's totally innocent. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, okay. Uh, last one, last one. Hold on. Uh, 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 oh, 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 oh. Okay, last one. The man you see in the mirror every morning. I mean, he's a felon. checks out. <laughs> Here's the thing. Fox desperately need all the ratings grabbers like this they can get because Dominion Voting Systems is suing Fox for $1.6 billion, arguing... <laughs> arguing that Fox News knew the damaging things they aired about Dominion in the 2020 election were lies, but they said them anyway because, uh, money. And <laughs> Dominion has proof that Fox knew that if they told the truth and exposed the former president's lies, they would alienate their codependent viewers. In fact, in one leaked document, Dominion showed that after a reporter fact-checked the former president's obvious lies on air, the CEO of Fox News freaked out and sent an email saying, this has to stop now. The audience is furious. It's bad for business. Yes, telling your customers the truth is terrible for business. That's why Arby's quickly abandoned their old slogan, we have the hog anus. <laughs> no, clearly. Mmm. Mmm. Little horsey sauce on that? Mmm. Can't go wrong. 
Now, clearly, Fox officials knew they were lying and where those lies would lead. In fact, in an email to that same CEO, Rupert Murdoch wrote, the former president insisting on the election being stolen and convincing 25% of Americans was a huge disservice to the country. Pretty much a crime. <laughs> Making me pretty much an accomplice. Luckily, no one will ever see this email. I love crime, 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 crime. <laughs> Reply all. <laughs> In these newly revealed texts, the Fox and folks said some truly terrible things about one of Tucker Carlson's frequent guests, conspiracy spreading lawyer Sidney Powell. One Fox producer wrote, That psychopath, she's getting the ex president all spun up and has zero evidence. And Tucker later replied, That C word, I hope she's punished. Wait, I'm, wait, I'm sorry. I'm being told that was about a lady Eminem that wouldn't have sex with him. Uh <laughs> But Fox News could soon have a new presidential candidate to lie for. It's Florida governor and tapeworm finally getting its first peak of sunshine, Ron DeSantis. DeSantis has been working behind the scenes to build donor support, including a recent visit to the Long Island estate of billionaire cosmetics heir and GOP donor Ronald Lauder. Yes, it's a battle for the makeup money. It's going to be tough. DeSantis might get Estee Lauder. But the ex-president has already locked up Big Louie's industrial face cock <laughs> and cake frost. <sighs> Your face will look like a cake. <laughs> Reportedly, DeSantis has been pitching himself to donors as a no-drama candidate. But even in private, he's still scared to go directly after the guy he's trying to beat. One donor said, from what I've heard, he does not say the ex-president is drama and chaos. He just says he's not. And that's the kind of big, bad, tough guy talk <laughs> that makes a real leader. Remember the words of Teddy Roosevelt, speak softly and actually just do that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, one of DeSantis' signature achievements is being mean to Disney for supporting the LGBTQ community. Now, because to punish Disney for speaking up against his don't say gay law, DeSantis took away Disney's special tax status and appointed a board of hand-picked right-wing goons to oversee the governance of Disney World. But it turns out he tangled with the wrong mouse because before DeSantis's new board could even get started, Disney stripped that board of power and now <laughs> the board and now the board lost its ability to do anything beyond maintain the roads and basic infrastructure. <laughs> You got played. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. You might notice that I just did the voice and did not show you a picture of Goofy while I did it. That's because everybody in show business knows you do not <laughs> with Disney's lawyers, okay? <laughs> Don't believe me? Look what they did to Bambi's mom after she violated her NDA. <laughs> no, I agree, it's horrible. But absolutely the most delicious part of this whole situation is how the Disney folks made this change permanent. They use something called the Royal Lives Clause, which means the ruling is valid in perpetuity or until, quote, the death of the last survivor of the descendants of King Charles III, King of England, living as of the date of this declaration. The King of England? <laughs> They literally went medieval on their ass. <laughs> it makes it, and it makes sense. It makes sense that Disney would do this because King Charles is a direct descendant of Dumbo. <laughs> speaking, wow. speaking of Dumbo's, Colorado representative and woman yelling, "You can't spell Jesus without Smith and Wesson." Lauren Boebert, yesterday during a House Oversight Committee hearing on crime in D.C., Boebert questioned a local council member on a proposed revision to the district's criminal code that was later withdrawn, and it got weird. In November of 2022, you led the charge to reform D.C.'s crime laws. Is that correct? I chaired the committee that that proposal came from. You led this charge, yes, sir. And uh, these charges, these changes, are now law here in D.C., correct? Do you mean the revised criminal code? Yes. Uh, no, those are not the law. Those are not the law. Always a good sign when lawmakers don't know what the law is. <laughs> it's like your cardiologist saying, well, it looks like you got a little blockage in your, uh, 
Doris, what's this one right here? The little pumpy squishy. You know, the pumpy pumpy squish squish makes the tomato juice move around the body. What is... <laughs> Bit of a rocky start there, uh, but Boebert pulled it together and went on to address the number one crime priority for this nation. Yes, Mr. Allen, did you or did you not decriminalize public urination in no, Washington, D.C.? Did you lead the charge to do so? No, it, the revised criminal code left that as a criminal charge. Did you lead the charge to decriminalize public urination in Washington, D.C.? No, ma'am. Did revised you ever criminal vote code in favor of decriminalizing public urination in Washington, D.C.? The revised criminal code that was did passed you by the ever council support kept it as a criminal offense. Did you, did, and you support this? Criminal? I voted for it, yeah. You voted to keep it as a criminal offense. That's correct. You're not going to get a different answer just because you keep asking the same question. <laughs> Remember what Einstein said. The definition of insanity is, tell me if you're in favor of public urination. You love it. Say you love it, P-boy. we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Brooke Sales and Arthur Clint Smith. Will come